I've sunk an enemy destroyer. Here we guys are doing fantastic today. Got a fun video with the Lucians, and this is going to be an awesome. And we're going to do a kind of a different take. We're going to do some of the good and some of the bad, and what we can learn from it as well. Because not all battles are wins. There's also losses we can learn from, and we're going to take a look at it. As always, before we begin, like, subscribe, bell button below. Appreciate all the support. We see value in the channel. Let us know below. And here we go, Lucian, one of my favorite destroyers now in clan battles. I have to say, one of the most powerful destroyers I've ever seen. Uh, and I'm not, I'm not saying that just to sound cruel and, you know, uh, critical about it, but I mean, I thought the small one was powerful, but man, Lucian, if you don't have it, try it, or, or if you do have it, try it out. If you don't, sorry, it was a dockyard event, I believe in a while ago, but, uh, it is super, super powerful. Just look at the gun reload, 1.3 seconds, and a, that's with Fearless Brawler, and, and I haven't even activated Adrenaline Rush or even AFT it or anything like that, so really really darn powerful guns and man what well, some of the fastest guns in the game and yeah, that are baked in so let's take a look at the, some of this fi fast firepower uh why do we decide to open up here uh, again we did an initial push with marceau to cap charlie just to force the team's hand going hey we capped it first to see what would they would do what kind of reaction would they uh encounter or what we would encounter and uh, really it's just uh, trying to analyze how are we going to use those fast firing guns to tackle any kind of opponent now i think i can bully any destroyer in illusions i mean it, it just goes to show because with the super heels that you see at the bottom there the fast firing reloads and the slim profile it is a very very difficult and annoying ship to play kind of like playing a cabra ops with great detectability i mean again the detectability on this thing is already down to 5.8 so it's something ridiculous ridiculous um uh, very very imp uh, impressive uh, concealment so right now what we're doing is using the fast fire reload to uh, start a fire on the Moscow. Now, again, I don't care what kind of cruiser you are. If you're going to sit there and tank, um, you got to be careful because eventually you can only absorb so much damage, especially being shot up by one, two, three ships at a time. Uh, especially with the Lucians, who's, uh, we can really start a lot of fires. So just the sheer amount of volume of shells being fired down range. I mean, yeah, the uh, the Moscow is pretty darn heavily armored, but the problem is it can start, you know, nothing is immune to fire. So if you can put enough shells on target, which we are doing right here with the Lucians, you can really, really just devastate a cruiser sitting there doing this, the basic camping technique of just sitting and holding an island with cover and uh, with radar, a uh, radar cruiser holding that that corner. And again, I like capitalizing on these moments because if I at least have one other ship to, to help me tank the damage, you can really just destroy a, uh, a radar cruiser sitting there because of the, it just can't absorb enough uh, damage and enough fires because uh, all ships in this game burn, right? So it doesn't matter how strong your armor your armor is, if, if you're going to burn, you can burn. So right there, we just take out the Moscow first ship down right there. And notice, the, notice how we're playing this more of a kind of a, a pivot point defense build. We can see that the St. Vincent's in the center there. We've got the Commissar providing air support. I think this is one of the powerful builds right here. Lucian's Marceau, Commissar spotting, destroyer hunting, and radar. We have Moscow holding that island. We lose our defense right there to the Bravo, but we have the Vermont to really just sit there and kind of bully that cap. And again, we still have our Vincent to back up in case they decide to push a charlie marceau is a quick fast destroyer that allows us to run back and forth and uh, kind of quick react that's why i like the destroyer role play so much because of the quick reaction force ability that you can really just pivot back where you're needed where you got where you have to go put the guns on the bear as well as attack destroyers and you, you can provide a lot of dpm fire support because you have fast firing guns it takes so long for a battleship to uh, reload so that's why i don't like playing the battleship role too too much in clan battles because I, I feel like i'm more effective by providing way more fire power down range being that annoying guy being that annoying player that everybody wants to shoot at so that my team has a nice easy day to fire and you know not have to worry about taking damage now just look at that raw sheer firepower that again the armor the guns are only 130 millimeters right but again it's not about the the penetration really too too much it's really about how much damage and fires can i start and then of course you got the deep water torpedo reload i mean that's the power of the destroyer 
Notice that we had 27 pans, 31 uh, non-pans. So I got only 50% of the shells that actually connect and do things. But look at that. Torpedo damage right there. Very, very strong and powerful. And again, that is the power of the destroyer. Now, here we go. Again, not doing too, too much damage. Like, these guns don't really kind of like little pea shooters, really. But honestly, like, yeah, we're doing 231 here and there on the, the superstructure. But really is the key is the fire starting ability of this thing. This thing is a kerosene lighter. It, look, there's another fire. It, the fire just is passive income damage. It just keeps on going, even though you're not shooting. If you don't shoot at anything, boom, fire's still burning him down. So even though he's fired, yep, he fired in smoke. So now I get to see him again. I'm just waiting for him to fire because I've noticed a lot of players really are just so tempted not to fire when they're in smoke because they just like, I'm not doing anything. And then they get nervous and they start panicking and they say, oh, I got to fire. Okay, so look at that. We have three fire, 63,000 damage right there. Now, the Vincent is going to, as you can see it, Charlie, is going to push the Salem and the Marceau Hunt on the Shimakaze. That should be an easy defeat right there, right? This gives us the ability to run back to Bravo Cap and help our Vermont. Vermont is almost about to die. And we got the torpedoes to hold up the GK, and we have RPF locating a Shimakaze over here at Bravo. Don't know exactly, but yep, there it is. He shifts, so he's capping Bravo, so I know he's somewhere in the cap. The cool thing I like about the Lucians, 5.8 concealment and a 5.5 hydro. 5.5. That's almost as close as the Z52 of 6. So I, I would rather have 5.5 than nothing, right? It, it is awesome. So here we go. He is spotted within our hydro, or not hydro, we, we detect him. And he drives into us. And look at the sheer raw DPM firepower. Even though they're like pea shooters, they don't do too, too much damage. But man, when you connect, and the re, it's just the rate of fire. 1.3 um, per a second reload. The Shimakaze cannot withstand this. Plus, we have a super heal if we need it, and it just now the heal doesn't heal very quickly. It heals over time, kind of like in those uh, arms race power ups. It, it doesn't heal immediately right away, but you can save it for those long kind of survivability. And here we go. Let's see if we can get him. And boom! Look at that. Boom! There it is. Splash one. He cannot absorb that much damage, and we have the heal to survive. Again, he had help from the GK and Marseille. I mean, that is why Lucian's so powerful. It, it is a punching bag to absorb damage, and right there. We're able to use a slim profile shimmy shimmy shake shake. There's one shot from Marseille. Look at that. We're tanking over a 768,000 damage right there. And we're just doing the left, right, left, right shimmy shake shake till we go undetected. And now we're undetected. And no notice the heal is still running. It's still slowly healing our ship back. Kind of like that arms raise power. All right. We're going to speed it up here. We're going to do a couple torpedo launches on the uh, GK. These things are very, very stealthy, uh, uh, very, very high dete or low detectability range and slow, very, very quick or slow reaction time. You don't have much time to react, basically. So we fire a couple uh, torpedoes right into the area. We think GK will probably turn. He's probably heading to Charlie, right? So we're going to just launch those torpedoes over there. And let's see if we can connect on a couple of these. Uh, we only need what? How much? He only has 20. Oh, yeah. These things hit with a wall. He has 22,000 damage. Just two torpedoes. Boom. Look at that. Splash two. 101,000 damage right the power of the Lucians right there and it is devastating okay now look at what happened to our team we we had St. Vincent's with the speed to go catch Alpha we have the Commissar to cap Charlie and you still he's spotting with airplanes so again I think it's a super super powerful makeup to have a Marceau and a Lucians running together to go out spot destroy the uh, kill the destroyer and go cap Commissar with the plane spotting very very overpowered and very I would say uh, unfair advantage if you will but Hey, if you're gonna use it, use it. If you're not trying, and if you're not cheating, you're trying. You ain't trying, right? That's why I always say it. Uh, never have a pick a fair fight. Anyways, we're gonna go back up to Marseille and uh, note, man, Marseille is powerful too. I mean, the speed of this thing. I mean, watch how much damage he takes off. And I don't now look at these guns. They're pea shooters. I can barely do any kind of damage on this guy. If he had taken that hit, you know, ooh, I could have taken a devastating right there. And boom, splash three, taking him out right there. Again, that was a heavy, heavy shot. He took out almost half, almost half of our existing HP right there. Again, Lucian, super, super powerful. Great destroyer hunter killer. Great torpedo bow. Great cap contester. Uh, great spotter. Great concealment. Uh, poor on the AA and my personal AA is trash for destroyers anyways. But just look at the amount of uh, devastation we can do in one little match right there. It start, starts a lot of fires. Great torpedo damage. Uh, it can defend caps. It can spot. It can do a lot of firepower uh, to put down range. And again, I think it's one of them. A very, very powerful combination with the Marceau or Smolin. Uh, very, very devastating. Very, very difficult to shoot at. Look at that. Potential damage almost to a million. And just like that, uh, how long did the battle last? 14 minutes. I mean, that is incredible for a destroyer to start. I mean, I've had matches in the Lucians where I was taking 1.6 million potential damage. So very, very powerful there. Um, let's take a look at some of the lessons we did uh, learn on another video with Lucians. And this time, I actually want to point out what the uh, the enemy team did that was really, really good. All right, team. Here's the on-the-map Northern Waters. 
numbers and let's take a look at the um, initial position over here and some of the lessons we can learn right here right off the bat is really strictly positioning like I said I you can never correct poor positioning right because you just can't it's the ships are slow it's not like a fighter jet where you can just reposition so quickly or majority of people are not destroyer players so it is very very difficult to um, initially push so like, let's see the right off the bat what the initial push is and like, like, like I'll pause the video right here um, we wanted to do a split up now again I We've been running with two destroyers going together to a cap to bully the destroyer. And by limiting one destroyer off the bat, I think it gives you a significant advantage. The downside is you leave open an entire flank open. So this time we actually decided to split the destroyers, which I honestly, I, you can see why I think it's a bad idea nowadays because of the sheer firepower or the, this caliber of place player skill doesn't support it. We had the Marceau go to the Charlie, and then we had Salem and Vincent. There's a lot of firepower going to Charlie right there. And Moscow will go in position in Vermont, and then Commissar is our spotting uh, aircraft. Again, I think this is a very suitable, I would say, build. Commissar with the plane spotting goes out, looks for everybody, figures out where they're at. Vermont, heavy firepower guns. Lucian, very, very strong cap contester. Moscow with its radar and armor, and of course, St. Vincent's very quick with Salem armor and the Marceau. Very, very powerful build, but unfortunately... It's not always about the ship buildup, but sometimes it's about just positioning and focus fire and coordination. So let's take a look at the, some of the mistakes we made right here. So right off the bat, uh, okay, Moscow right there, spotted. I'm sorry, not spotted, but he's. I'm well within his 12-kilometer radar, so if I get radar, boom, he'll see me right away. Now here initially off the bat, I thought I could take on the Holland. Now we had the plane spotting going on, but unfortunately Holland has the best AA in the game, in my personal opinion, and really... It, it, you have an airplane spotting him is just very difficult because he's going to shoot down all the planes so easily, right? So I opened fire on him, revealing my position. I did a lot of overpins. I should have used HE. I thought that these guns could do a lot of damage for a the AP style, but again, the AP is not very powerful on those light skin destroyers, more for the Ragnar or heavier kind of armor builds for the destroyers like Cabros and Kleber and, you know, Marceau, kind of those heavier uh, HP kind of guys. I, HE should have been selected for the lighter uh, skin destroyers, and that's my le uh, learning lesson right there. Me, bad right here. I was so focused on the Moss, but he took two torpedoes, but Luke, Rick, okay, look at this. Here is the problem I face right here. I Bad mistake on my part. As I was shooting the Holland, he looked at me, looked at his predictive reticle, and fired right through there, and I kept going forward. Lesson learned. One, I should have either turned away earlier back here, back in this area over here. I should have turned and slowed my, my speed, maybe three-quarter half speed, to throw off any kind of predicted torps. I would have done a great job right there. Notice he's all, the Marseille is also firing. That would have thrown off his shots. Moscow would have also been just, um, thrown off his shots by just slow rolling it coming over here. And I should have slammed on the brakes. Notice I'm at, still at full speed. A ship does not turn very, very well at full speed. It will slowly... Remember, the faster you go, the wider your arc will be. So, again... What do you do? You slam on the brakes and hard left turn. And that will allow you to slow your close the distance even more, allowing you to not take up as much distance traveled when you make this slow turn. Again, it, instead of a wide, slow arcing turn, slamming on the brakes and then going left turn would have been had me stop over here. And that would have thrown off these torpedoes. Again, also my bad, not using hydro this far out. Again, I should have known that. Again, I try to hold the uh, hydro because I want to use it for those smoke. But again, Holland doesn't have smoke or anything. I wanted to detect the D's in smoke at 5.5 kilometers for hydro. Again, that doesn't work because he's so far away. And I took the punishment. I'm dead after this hit right here. And you can't do anything when you're dead, right? So that's the first learning lesson right there. Look, I... Uh, now look, I take two torpedoes. You would think that's okay. It didn't. It didn't take too much. I mean, I still, I'm still alive. Two fire floodings. I can. I can't. Of course, I can't damage those because I already used my damage gone. And then, of course, I have this heal. But shots are in the air from this Marseille again. I should have just slow rolled that, slammed on the brakes, and thrown that shot off. And just look what happens. Right at the perfect timing, and boom, he hits me right there and takes me out of the game. So lesson learned on my part right there. Now let's take a look at the lesson of my team. Look at the positioning of the Moscow. Moscow is in that corner position like another Moscow. That's one on one, right? Okay, now the problem is Vermont is being fired upon one, two, three, four potentially there. And he has to make a decision on who to shoot at. Commissar is almost pretty much out of the game if he's only his plane spotting or he's, he's so far behind this island. Uh, another problem, St. Vincent behind this island coming right. All he has to shoot is this left side and it's very, very slow reload for a battleship. Salem behind this rock can't really do much either. So there's really no fire support. That's the biggest problem, I think, and sometimes in the positioning. If you position your ships in a way that you're, you can't bring your guns to bear, again, Commissar's flying his planes right now, can't shoot his guns, right? That's one set of guns that's not available. Moskva's also not going to be able to shoot um, uh, anything because he's about to die. So let's see here. Let's speed it up. Yep, there he goes. Moskva's, Moskva's down. Now, both Moskva's go down right there. That's the problem of two camping radar cruisers. Now, you would think that'd be okay, but the Marseille... 
does a very, very good job of actually pushing. Uh, let's see here. Let me take a look and move right here. We'll take a look at where uh, Marseille is pushing through. Marseille does a good, good job uh, of uh, pushing down the flank. And I think that was a crucial moment right there. Um, let me see, let me back it up and we'll take an overview, sky view. And you can see right here positioning. Just look at the position of where everybody's at. Marseille is already pretty much dead because he's being fired upon by, you know, a gearing, a booster, and it's just too much to bear. It's just too much to handle. You can't absorb that much damage. So that is, again, poor positioning on our part because, uh, here, watch this, once you lose your storage, it's over. So. The, both the stars were done, right? And look at the Salem. Salem was over here, not able to bring bear, guns to bear on anything, no spotting either. Ver Vincent, still behind this island, not per, be able to bring guns. Now look at the Kremlin, what they're doing. Kremlin had shots through the middle here where he covered. Gearing could spot our destroyer if he needed to. Rooster is covering Bravo, and nobody's there to contest that area or flank him that too, too well. The other issue is Vermont's in retreat, not able to bring guns to bear, not all of them. And can you're either shooting out of Marseille and Montana. That's that's two objects you got to fight against. Again, the Commissar is unable to support Vermont other than just having planes and in, in a poor position. Honestly, I don't think Commissar is a very good set of guns to uh, take on a Montana and Marseille at the same time. Marseille is going to, again, push down and just, just look. Uh, what they're doing right here there it's just not you're not able to put enough gunpowder and firepower with the positioning that you have again if you're spread out too thin or you're behind an island and you're not able to get your guns to bear it's just i mean the team can just steamroll you right here like a marseille could literally do yeah he's taking damage but then you got a montana firing as well he again that's good good teamwork see Mon vermont is trying to kill the marseille while the montana has free reign to shoot at whatever he wants and you can see right there, it's pretty much just a little shooting match. They got the cap, and they can continue pushing us out of the cap. So really, it's just a time, uh, a time in their favor kind of uh, situation. Marseille's hugging the island. Montana can now just uh, fire at free will, and he's a very, very tanky battleship. Uh, he can shoot at the commissar all day. Salem, you can see at the top there, uh, playing around uh, with the. Yep, we lose the Salem to the Kremlin. Of course, broadside shot, and of course, we lose our Vermont to Montana. So again. All that positioning it is it plays a crucial, crucial pull. And the team did a gr the enemy team did a great, great job of just literally spreading it out, covering their sector, and ha being in a position where all the teammates were being able to bear bring their guns to bear. And I think that's very, very important and crucial. So we'll take a look at that in the uh, uh, quick overview uh, map. All replay. right, so let's take a look at the uh, uh, initial positioning of this map right here. Uh, so this was our first victory we had, and this is why I was saying they the power of pushing two destroyers into Charlie Cap right off the bat to bully that destroyer right off the bat and push them away and then cap two points so that now it forces the enemy team to react to that. How are they going to do it? Are they going to... Normally, most teams will try to push in to retake that cap or contest the contested cap. And of course, if they also recognize early that with two destroyers are over here, then they'll try to push the opposite in with their uh, their force right there. So let's take a look right off the bat. Okay, Charlie's taken. Now that we see well, how is the team, the team enemy team reacting. Now here's the problem at Bravo. Um, at Bravo, we have the d defense um, running away and getting shot at by one, two, potentially three of a destroyer here, and Vermont is supporting. Now, if he goes down, now you, you're down one ship at that weak side. So we take out the Moscow, but we lose a defense as well. Now all we have is a Vermont. So this is where it comes into communication skills right here. How fast can you react to this? Because now we have to figure out who is going to come back and support the Vermont with the Bravo. Now we have a Shimakaze dest dest uh, destroyer torpedoing. Commissar is okay. This is why I like the Commissar spotting for one instance, because we have planes to kind of hold an entire area just to kind of spot to figure out where they're at so we can react in time. The downside is uh, Commissar's guns are, are not in the place. You're down one set of cruiser guns. And, of course, look where we're going. See, so here we go. Now they're doing the heavy push right here. They have a heavy push with the potential destroyer right here. So three versus one. So that I have to come back as a destroyer player. That's why I think the destroyer player is the most impactful player of the game because you go into spot cap and then you can react to where the problem is. So as you can see, I'm reacting because the, the Vermont needs a lot of help right here. So right off the bat, we have torpedoes. And then, of course, this is just us getting lucky. Uh, if, the, if, if the Shimikaze wasn't spotted, we would have a hard, hard time trying to go find him. Of course, we have RPF. We know where he's at. But right now, we just got to figure out how to eliminate this player. And then we got to hold the GK with torpedoes. So really, we're just lucky we were able to take the Shimikaze. Now, look at the situation right here. They have one, two, three caps. Now, normally, that would be look like a victory to them, right? But we know that Vincent has speed and get alpha. And we have the Commissar can go cap Charlie undetected. So now, we, our job right here is the power of the destroyer. 
Shore. We have to hold off literally these two advancing ships at Bravo, and we can just use torpedoes and just kind of, you know, keep them at bay, torpedo them, take as much damage as we can. And then that's the power of what the destroyer player can do. See, we got both caps at this point, and we we're just lucky we were able to cap and survive the long run. That's why it's so, so powerful to have the destroyer player last the majority of the battle because this situation could have ended really poorly if we didn't have this destroyer player here because if we had died to say there's nobody here to defend Charlie they could have taken it back and won and they're going to take on the Vincent take Alpha and the Commissar probably wouldn't be survive a one-on-one -on -one dual engagement with the GK so right off the bat again this is why destroyer players are so so important to keep them alive and that quick reaction to take the Bravo that's the okay now the pro is uh, quick reaction to take out Charlie and push through Alpha. The downside was we almost lost it because the enemy team pushed through Alpha Bravo because we have no destroyer support over here. Luckily, we were able to reposition the destroyer and came back to Bravo. So let's take another look at the map and see what we did wrong and what could we learn from it as well as there. Okay, so here's the other uh, situation where we we tried to we split up the destroyers. Now, th this can be a good or bad thing in the sense of how you want to look at it, but uh, splitting up the destroyers is may is normally what most teams do because they want to make sure that the contestant cap gets destroyer spotting and we don't leave the weak side uh, with a without a destroyer because we saw in the last previous map they could just simply just push right through without any kind of destroyer support. That's very very crucial. Here, uh, this is what happens when you lose a destroyer right off the bat. So you notice, again, I talked about me just not paying attention, and boom, I go down. Let's see, all right. There, I lost. Okay, so now look at the situation where we're in right now. We don't have a destroyer, no, no spotting, no contesting the cap, no uh, destroyer hunting as well. And now we have a Moscow to Moscow being shot right here as well as a Vermont. Here's the problem, though. The Commissar is the spotting, uh, air, you know, I would say you know, ship, but the guns aren't being able to use and they're behind an island. So Moscow is about to die right here. So this is the situation running in. Okay, Moscow's down. Vermont is the only set of guns to contest with the Kremlin, Montana, Holland, and Marseille. Four versus one potentially right here. Not a very good situation. Commissar is out of position because he's run away or using his plane. So no guns uh, support there. St. Vincent, obviously, we talked about behind an island. Salem right here, not able to support the Marceau, which is going to be shot at potentially by Kremlin. Gearing in smoke and a Wooster with radar. Three versus one one there three versus one potentially here and that's why i see that is the downside of having poor positioning and not getting your guns able to bear and not being able to fire at all on the, the destroyer players as well again the destroyer player is the most critical component of the game it provides that kind of miss uh that sneaky stealthy tactical sense of the, the the component of the game that i think is very very powerful and crucial but that's my thought on that that's where we could have done better is we could have uh, at least brought in Honestly, I think the Commissar is cool with the planes, but it's one set of guns out of the game not being able to shot while spotting is a crucial component. The fact that you have one, two cruisers able to fire, plus a Montana, and then they have potentially Kremlin pushing through to take on the Vermont. I think we could have pushed the Vermont and Moscow and had another set of cruiser guns that would be able to contest this, had an equal match, and me not dying right off the bat. <laughs> that would have been a very important. Marceau, on the other sense, I would think that it'd be the Vincent and the, and the Salem should have pushed right through here, taken Bravo because they only have Wooster. Their two battleships are over here, so therefore they have no battleship support over here so that's why i think we could have done better at that point but let me know what you guys think in the comments below and what we could do better what your thoughts are and then as always thank you so much for your support like scrub bubble below and uh hope to see you guys soon be safe and we'll see you next time cheers